Hi. Today we're going to talk about the composition of the oceans. Um, basically, what's in the water? Not counting all the things that are alive, but what are the things that are dissolved and contained inside the water? Ocean water contains dissolved salts and dissolved gases. Now, by dissolved, we mean it's actually incorporated inside of it. So, like, if you buy a soda, and when you open it up, you see all the bubbles come out. Um, that's carbon dioxide. Before you opened it up, all those bubbles were dissolved inside. Um, most of you are very familiar with the idea of dissolving a solid into water or into any liquid. You pour some sugar or some salt into water, you stir it up, and it looks like it disappeared. Those solid particles break apart and are down inside of the water. Same thing happens with gases. So first we'll take a look at dissolved salts. Um, I take a moment here to kind of remind some folks um, salt is not just sodium chloride, which is what you and I are most familiar with as salt. We use it in our homes and our kitchens. Um, there are other salts as well. Any, uh, when we get to the chemistry unit, any of the metals in the first two columns of the periodic table that combine with any of the uh, halogens, the nonmetals in the 17th column, form to make a salt. Um, first, we're going to look at salinity. Uh, why are the oceans salty? What is salinity and what factors can change salinity? So why are the oceans salty? Well, the oceans are salty because the Earth's crust um, has salts in it, has these um, crystals that form from the metals and the halogens. And as they have eroded over all these years, they've washed into the sea. Um, volcanoes with solids and gases from eruptioning. And we have the same kind of things from the ocean floor, uh, again, where minerals and materials that are dissolved from those sediment deposits get into the water. Um, water is a universal solvent. It does a wonderful job of dissolving almost everything. So once it's in the water, it's in the water. Um, the saltiness, this thing that we call salinity, is a measure of the amount of salt that is dissolved in a particular amount of water. How much salt is in that how much water? The average salinity of seawater, again average, is 35 parts per thousand. Um, that means that for every 1,000 parts of water, 35 of those parts are the salt. So for 1,000 grams of seawater, it would contain 35 grams of salt. Now to put that in perspective with things that you're more familiar with, if I had a two liter bottle that was full of ocean water, Inside that two liter bottle of ocean water, there would be about four tablespoons of salt. So 70 grams of salt is pretty close to right about four tablespoons. So four tablespoons of salt into a two liter bottle of water, that's about the saltiness of the average saltiness of the ocean. So does that change? We kept saying the average. Um, so yeah, they can change. Uh, the salinity of the ocean. During evaporation and freezing, evaporation in particular, think about the sun is beating down, the water evaporates. We just did that in the water cycle, but it's the water molecules that evaporate. Everything else gets left behind. So if you're taking water away and all the salt is left behind, that's going to increase salinity. But the same thing is also happening at the cold, cold regions like North Pole um, and Antarctica. Where that seawater is freezing, it's the water molecules that are freezing and they mostly squeeze out all the rest of the salt. So the places where evaporation is occurring and freezing is essentially taking water out of the ocean but leaving the salt in. Salinity of the oceans can also decrease anytime water is being put back into the ocean. So when rain falls on the ocean, and most of the rain falls back down on the ocean, where it's raining, the water that's falling down is just plain fresh water. There's no salt in it. So where it lands on the ocean, it's adding more water to what's already there. So it becomes less salty, lower salinity. Um, likewise, runoff. So when we've got rivers that run out into the ocean, the river is fresh water. All that water that collected from the drainage basin up on land is draining down into the river and it's emptying into the ocean. So all those tons and tons and tons of gallons of water that are fresh water pouring into the ocean, right where it's pouring in, is going to be lower salinity, 
less salty. Uh, likewise, freezing, taking water out, um, when that ice melts, the melting of the ice, the liquid water, runs back into the ocean, decreasing salinity. Bill Nye the Science Guy! Bill Nye the Science Guy! Bill, 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 Bill Nye the Science Guy! Here we have some colored water, and here some salt. Now suppose we dissolve these equal amounts of salt in this water. Which one is gonna taste salty? I don't know. Well, let's try it. easy. This one's going to taste saltier because it has the same amount of salt dissolved in less water. Now let's say we were out in the middle of the ocean and the sun is beating down. <sighs> What's going to happen? Well, some of the seawater is going to evaporate into the air and the salt is going to stay there. It's just like having the same amount of salt dissolved in less water. Now the more salt... I'm going to pause here for a second. Um, he's saying heavier... Yeah, kind of, but really the term we need to think more about is density. Uh, there's going to be more mass for every unit of volume because when the salt dissolves, it breaks apart and fills in the space between the water molecules. It doesn't increase the volume much, but it does increase the mass. So yes, it would be heavier, but it's more about the density. If I had a million gallons of water in a lake, that's eight million pounds. If I had just a teeny, teeny, tiny penny, doesn't weigh much. It's still going to sink down through the water because it's more dense than the water. So it sinks. So that blue water that had the salt in it is more dense than the regular plain water. That's why as he's pouring it in, it sinks to the bottom of that fish tank and moves across the bottom. So, salinity. The salinity changes the density. Higher salinity equals higher density. Lower salinity equals lower density. The more dense the material is, it will sink down through the less dense material. This is part of what gets our ocean currents moving deep down. All right, so less salinity, we've got coastal waters, polar seas, and the mouths of large rivers. So, coastal waters. Anywhere it's the ocean is next to land. Remember, water runs off the land. So everywhere water is running off the land, you're getting more water into the ocean, lower salinity. Um, the mouths of large rivers, obviously large rivers, the mouth of the river is where it is emptying into the ocean. All right, so we talked about dissolved salts. Next, we're going to talk about dissolved gases. Uh, the gases that are up there, I hope, are very familiar to you. In seventh grade science, you were learning about the atmosphere, and you were taught that the main gases that make up the atmosphere are nitrogen, oxygen, or we were told argon, and carbon dioxide. Um, the atmosphere, 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. Only 21% is oxygen. Just barely less than 1% is argon. And then the next most abundant is carbon dioxide. That's way down at 0 0.04, four hundredths of a percent. All the other gases make up that other 0.02% that makes up the gases in the air. Well, those same gases in the air are the same gases that are dissolved in the ocean. So the main gases in the ocean, we're also going to talk about photosynthesis and cellular respiration under the sea, and how the properties of seawater affect the amounts of dissolved gases in the sea. Um, just like all of us up here on top of land have got to have oxygen, all of the things that live in the water also need oxygen. So the gases are important. Um, there are some living things that don't need oxygen, but there's not many of those. They're, they're much, much rarer than us that need the oxygen. Again, in the ocean, the gases are the exact same percentages as are what in the atmosphere. Hopefully this is not too surprising because it's the atmosphere touching the ocean 
that dissolves the gases in the atmosphere and in the ocean. They're the same gases. Uh, the exchange of these gases takes place anytime we've got some stirring up going. So the winds blowing across the top of the ocean kick up some waves. Um, as those waves move closer in towards the land and they start churning and moving around, all of this agitation is getting the air surface mixed in with the water surface, dissolving those gases. Um, we will learn later in this year, and you also definitely covered in earlier years in school, definitely some in seventh grade about uh, cells. Photosynthesis takes plants taking in carbon dioxide and they give off oxygen, making food. In cellular respiration, in the mitochondria, it takes in oxygen and it gives off carbon dioxide. These are equal and opposite chemical reactions. So all of the plants need carbon dioxide and they make oxygen. All of the mitochondria, including animal cells, need the oxygen and make the carbon dioxide. Back and forth, back and forth. This is part of what helps keep that amount of carbon dioxide and oxygen balanced. Um, underneath the ocean, in the water, same thing's going on. Um, plants and phytoplankton uh, do photosynthesis. They take in carbon dioxide and they release O2 oxygen. See those little bubbles on the leaves? That's oxygen. Um, and all of the animals with their mitochondria are taking in oxygen and they're releasing carbon dioxide. So again, just like in the air, same thing's going on in the ocean. Uh, instead of lungs, they're using gills. Same process. Some of the properties of seawater affect how much gas they can dissolve in it. Um, colder water can hold more gas than warm water. Uh, the molecules are slower and closer together so they can keep more things packed in between. Uh, seawater with low salinity also holds more gas than high salinity um, because the higher salinity means that there's more molecules already in between the water molecules. There's less room for the gas molecules. So lower salinity holds more gases. And deep water, as you go deeper in the ocean, the pressure increases. Well, the higher the pressure, the more of the gas that stays dissolved. Now, that's one of those things that you already knew, but you didn't know that you knew. When you've got that bottle of soda, when you open the top, you see all those bubbles. Well, because before you opened it, the pressure inside that bottle was already higher. So it was keeping all of that carbon dioxide gas dissolved in the liquid. And when you open the top, you've released that pressure. The pressure goes down, and a lot of that gas comes out of solution. So we see the bubbles because the pressure got lower. So if we increase pressure, it'll hold more carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is one of the most important gases uh, that dissolve in the ocean uh, because it plays more roles than just um, in photosynthesis. Some of the carbon dioxide remains as dissolved gases, but most of the carbon dioxide uh, actually combines with water to make carbonic acid or bicarbonate. So carbon dioxide plus water, oops, wrong place. Carbon dioxide plus water can make carbonic acid. And carbonic acid plus carbonates, we don't have to go into that specifics, but that makes bicarbonates. And both of these chemical reactions remove carbon dioxide from the seawater and allow it to be fixed into something else. So a lot of marine organisms build shells. And a lot of the shells, they're using that bicarbonate from calcium carbonate. Uh, they take that bicarbonate and they make the calcium carbonate, which is what makes the hard parts of their shells. And when a lot of those organisms die, um, some of that bicarbonate um, washes off and goes back into the water, but most of it settles down to the seabed and gets compacted in and that leaves a much higher amount of carbon in the seabed. Now, gas levels, as gas levels rise in the atmosphere, so does the amount of the same dissolved gases in the ocean. If O2 oxygen increases in the atmosphere, the amount of O2 dissolved in the ocean also increases. Likewise, if 
carbon dioxide increases in the atmosphere, it also increases in the ocean. Because remember, it's the atmosphere gases that dissolve into the ocean.